Why would you want to gain weight? Well, to build muscle, we know we need to lift weights and we need to eat more calories. Now, if you eat more calories over a period of time and lift weights, that's going to result in weight gain. To build muscle, you will have to gain weight. The number one biggest weight gain mistake that I see is people not gaining the correct amount of weight. So you're either gaining far too much or you're not gaining enough. You're actually losing weight in some cases. So let me just explain how things work for beginners and intermediates. And even if you're more advanced, it's gonna be a nice little refresher for you. So to build muscle, you have to eat in a calorie surplus. Now, yes, there's gonna be someone in the comments that says you can you can actually build muscle uh, uh, in a calorie deficit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can technically, as a beginner, build muscle in a calorie deficit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building the optimal amount of muscle. People who say things like that, it's like saying to a Formula One racing driver, you can have the car that goes 100 miles an hour, or you can have the car that goes 160 miles per hour, and they just say, well, I'll have the 100 then. No, if you ask Lewis Hamilton which car he wants, he's gonna choose the one that goes the quickest. So I want you to get your goal the quickest. So if you want to build the most muscle, the quickest, you need to eat in a calorie surplus. That's what you have to do. To explain the calorie surplus, I will explain maintenance calories. Maintenance calories are the number of calories you eat per day, and it doesn't matter if you don't even know what your numbers are. That's the set of number of calories you eat each day, to where if you eat that number, you won't gain any weight on the scales, and you won't lose any weight on the scale. That's your maintenance calories. That might be 2,500 calories, where you eat that every day, you won't gain or lose any. So a calorie surplus is when we go above that, so maybe you ate 3,000 calories a day, now you're gaining weight. This is what we want if we want to build muscle. And of course, the opposite of that is a calorie deficit, so we're going one step lower than the maintenance, which might be, let's say, 500 calories less than your maintenance calories. That might be 2,000 for you, and then that's how you lose body fat. So those three things are very important. Maintenance, you stay the same. Calorie surplus, you gain. Calorie deficit is when you lose. Weight gain mistake number two is that you're not taking it seriously enough. And this usually is to do with your nutrition. And it's okay if your nutrition isn't perfect. My nutrition wasn't perfect at one point. I would argue it's still not perfect. But you learn on the go. It doesn't matter if you've been trying to gain weight for a few weeks or a few years. Your nutrition is a very important part of this. And if you don't give it any time of day, you're just not gonna hit your goals. For example, how many meals are you eating a day? What type of meals are you eating a day? How are those meals getting you to eat enough protein? How does your schedule fit with eating those meals? What, at what times are you going to be able to eat this food? Do you need to take any snacks to school or to work with you? All of these questions need to be answered because if you don't answer those questions, basically you'll have no real plan and if you have no real plan, you're not gonna win. The key to success with this is actually trying not to be perfect trying not to do everything at once. This is one of my biggest mistakes, is trying to do everything at once. I'll get the perfect diet plan, and I'll get the perfect everything, and trying to do it all at once as a beginner is so overwhelming that you just end up doing nothing. The key is to just focus on that calorie surplus for maybe three, four weeks. Then you nail that down. Maybe you start thinking, well, how can I make my meals easier. Maybe you buy a slow cooker, cook your meals on a Sunday. Okay, that's one step further. That's helping me to be more sustainable. You're eating the same types of foods, you know how many calories are in those foods. Maybe then you start thinking about, well, I actually drink three cans of Coca-Cola a day. Maybe I'm just gonna limit myself to one can of Coca-Cola a day. I'm only hitting 100 grams of protein a day, I really need 170. How can I boost that up to get close to 170? All of these things need to be answered and thought about and be made a priority, but over time. Don't try to do those things all at once. Focus on the calorie surplus and slowly implement these things in. I could do this this week and a few weeks go by, you've built that habit of eating enough protein for a few weeks. Okay, well now I need to cut out this one thing I keep doing, this bad habit that I've got. Maybe it's the Coca-Cola, maybe it's not going to bed on time and you're not gonna build muscle if you're not going to bed on time. Maybe it's too much partying. Maybe you're only gonna go out once a week instead of going out Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. It's up to you what you want to do, but you need to make sure you make these things a priority if you want to get in the best shape you can get in. The thing is, guys, part of your value as a man is your physical presence, is your strength, is how you look, is how much muscle and how low body fat you have. That doesn't mean you have to be extreme. It doesn't mean you have to be six, seven percent body fat. You can be 
12, 13, 14% body fat. You can be a healthy body fat, 14, 15%. You may have only built three, four pounds of muscle, but that is noticeable. You don't need to be a big bodybuilder. You don't need to have 20 inch arms and take drugs. You don't need to be that to be a man. In fact, those men are usually the most insecure men, but you do have to stay in shape. You do have to build some kind of physique that is somewhat impressive. Some of your value as a man is tied to that, and it's you setting an example. How can you expect to lead your relationships if you're not setting a good example for the people around you? How can you expect to be a good father if you want to have kids if you're not even setting a good example yourself? Is your son going to look up to you, or is he not? He's probably not if you're a fat, lazy piece of shit. He's probably not going to be looking up at you. He's probably going to be looking at some other guy on TV. You want to be that leader in those scenarios and leaders and people that other people look up to are always in shape. That's a non-negotiable. The thing is about being in shape, it shows a lot about your self-confidence because not only does being in shape, building muscle, losing body fat, help you build more self-confidence because you just like yourself more, but you need to like yourself in the first place to actually get in shape. If you don't even take care of the one body you have, you're in this body 24 hours a day, you cannot escape it until the day you die. Why not take care of it? Why not make it look good? Why not make it actually function the way it should function? And I feel like people that don't do that just lack self-respect for themselves. Being in shape is just a responsibility, it's your responsibility that everybody should hold themselves accountable for and it should become a habit. Exercising and eating healthy should just be as important as brushing your teeth every day or having a shower. The things that you always do, that exercise, that nutrition, that actually sticking to a regimen should be the same as those things. You should be as sure that you're going to go to the gym as you are that the sun's going to come up every day. The third biggest weight gain mistake that I often see is your training and a lot of times you're doing too much volume. Again, more is not always better. This idea that always doing more is always better, that works if you're taking drugs, you're taking steroids. Yes, if you do more work, you're going to be able to recover from that work. If you're somebody that's natural, that's never going to take steroids, and I hope that most of you don't go down that path, you can't recover the same amount as somebody that's taking drugs. It's not possible. And that's a lot of the problem with YouTube fitness. You've got a lot of the guys, even the guys that you don't think are taking stuff, most of them are taking drugs and have been for a long time. A lot of them are taking moderate doses of testosterone and it allows them to be able to do 24 sets of biceps a week. It allows them to do 30 sets a week. And you wonder why you can't do 30 sets a week. Or when you do decide to perform 24 or 30 sets of biceps per week, you actually get smaller, you don't grow, it's because you can't recover from that. The optimal amount of sets per week for each body part is anywhere between 9 and 15 sets a week. If you've been training 5-10 years, you might want to go up to around 18 sets per week, but if you've only been training, let's say, one year, you're usually around 12 sets per week. If you've not even started training yet, around 9 sets per week for each body part. So I split that up into full body workouts. Full body workouts are proven to be more effective than split routines. That's not what everyone else will tell you, but that's the facts. You can check out my video on full body workouts after this if you want to. I believe I do link a study in that video as well, but all the best coaches in the world know full body workouts build the most muscle. So I would do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever best works for your schedule, so you're skipping a day in between. And you're doing three workouts a week if you was aiming for, let's say, nine sets as a beginner, then you would do three sets of every body part Monday, three sets of every body part Wednesday, and the same on Friday. So that would be biceps, triceps, chest, shoulders, rear deltoids, back, legs, you're incorporating all the body parts basically into that one workout and you're doing a full body workout three days a week. That is the best way to build muscle. The other thing about your training is how are you showing up? Because showing up isn't enough. When you go to the gym, if you're going with your friends and you're going with people who are just not taking it that seriously, or even you're not taking it that seriously, just turning up at the gym isn't enough. If you're just doing one set of bench press and you go through the motions and then you might sit on your phone for five minutes and look at Instagram or something, then you get up and wander off somewhere else in the gym, that is really not helping you. What you need to do is go in with a plan, be strategic, and actually focus on what you're doing. If you're doing a bench press, let's just use this exercise for the example, when you're doing that bench press, 
think to yourself, your whole mind, everything should be thinking about just moving that weight. Okay, did I move the weight slow enough? Did I feel the chest? Did I squeeze the chest at the top of the movement? Do I have any pain? Did I tuck my shoulders in enough? Was my arms flaring out? How can I get more out of this exercise? Because Arnold Schwarzenegger used to say, that he could go into a gym, do one set of any exercise, walk out and accomplish more than everybody else. And the reason he was saying that is because you can look around and people aren't really taking it that seriously. They're doing the same movement patterns they've always done and it's not the correct way to do it. You need to always be thinking about how you can improve. Even still to this day, I will go on an exercise and think, did I do my best there? Is there a way I could have squeezed the muscle more? Is there a way I could have slowed down or even sped up if I needed to? And even to the extent of filming your workouts, if you have the opportunity to do that, or getting a friend to just film your exercise and send you the video, that's very helpful. Because we're gonna be eating more calories, when it comes to cardio, do try to get some steps in. If you can fit it into your schedule, if at, if at school or at work you can go and do a 30 minute or a 60 minute walk at some stage, if you can do that first thing in the morning, if you have a dog, it's a good opportunity to take your dog for a walk. Trying to get some steps in is going to reduce the amount of body fat that you gain whilst you're bulking up. Doing things like running and strenuous cardio or going on the machines or jogging, I don't recommend that. I think for the most part, if you're trying to build muscle, it's not a good way to build muscle. You're just gonna be tiring yourself out so much on the cardio you can't give 100% in the weight room. I hope you've got value from this video so far, as I promised. If you want to know how many calories you actually need to eat to be in a calorie surplus, if you take your body weight in pounds, multiply by 15 to 16, then eat that many calories per day. This is just a rough guide and it will be different for each person. Sometimes you'll need more than this, sometimes you'll need less, but it's just a rough guide. If you're somebody that's very active in their career, in their job, whatever, or you're someone that's just sat at a desk, obviously you need to adjust your calories for that. But if you just multiply by anywhere between 15 and 16, what you do is weigh yourself at the start of the week and at the end of the week once you've eaten that many calories per day. And if you've gained 0.5 pounds or around that, then you can stick to those calories. If you've gained way more than that, of course you need to take some calories away. And if you've not gained enough or you've lost weight, then of course, once again, we need to add some calories. So the first few weeks of eating in a calorie surplus, it does take a little bit of setup work. You do have to adjust, you do have to look at things, is this right? Do I need to add a little more calories, take a little bit? But the beauty is within a few weeks, you'll know exactly how many calories you need to be eating each day to gain the right amount of weight. I've put a video on screen right now, which is why you should do full body workouts. It's a video I did quite a while ago, but the information is really good in that video. And it's just to try and convert people from doing these stupid split routines, which for the most part don't hold that much value. Of course, there are examples where they do, but for the most part, they don't. Full body workouts are much better for building muscle.